Cadillac, but uh, that's not the topic of the today's video. If you haven't seen the last video or didn't come here from um, Instagram, you might not know what the fuck is going on. Basically, I was continuing to build the Camaro, put the 74 front end and uh, rear end on there, just to see if it fits according to clearances and stuff and uh, well put some paint strip on there and uh, well let's just say plans have changed because suddenly I was confronted with a 90s flipper machine that I didn't know of uh, I have never seen the car it was a um, well-renowned show car in Germany in Belgium and what the fuck ever um, I had this car for six years and did not know and all of a sudden Instagram uh, exploded because of me finding this. I was a bit overwhelmed with uh, all of this but I calmed down. I calmed down enough so that I could uh, start doing the first engine disassembly video of the Camaro. I'm not sure if I am going to use this engine. Uh, powertrain is still unclear. The only thing that is certain is that I'm going to swap it back to the original, original state, um, to a manual transmission. Even the OG owner of uh, the airbrush design did not know that it was a manual transmission from factory, because when he got it, it was already an automatic transmission, TH350. Let's just begin. And if you're still wondering what the fuck I'm talking about, check out my Instagram, Happy Crash. Yeah, let's go! So yeah, this is my 350 sensor bolt that I bought for this car in 2018 alongside with a TH350. There are no modifications done to it except a uh, Edelbrock Performer intake. I know for I know that for a fact because um, well I put the intake on there and because also I can't fucking read because it says it right there. Um, everyone was a passenger in this car told me that this car pulls really fucking good, better than what should be expected, so we may find a modified cam in there, or it's just the mythical G20 van that I heard so much about, I don't know, because this engine came out of a G20 van, but... Uh, that, excuse me, what the fuck is this? Uh, did you really put an engine on here? Okay, there was my exhaust pipe, but... Uh, what the fuck is this? This is not right, okay? So let's just replace this water for a bigger one and put this on the engine. Before we even start, do you notice something weird going on here, right here? Notice anything? The experienced one of you might tell, hmm, looks a bit weird, can't put my finger on it. Well, let me tell you what the fuck's going on. This is an oil pressure plug. 
where you put some oil pressure sending unit or some shit in there, I don't know. This is not. This is a blind hole. The story with this is that the engine was in the car, I put it in there and looked up right here and thought, hmm, something's missing right here and I thought it was an oil pressure hole. So I got nervous and tried to put a plug in here, didn't work. So I threaded the hole to fit an NPT sized plug, put some sealant around it and put it in there. Now I know that this is actually the uh, thread for the ball joint for the clutch linkage. So <laughs> I fucked up there. Uh, let's see if we can save that. Uh, and also this is not temporarily. Uh, this loop here would normally go to an oil cooler. In fact I drove around with this. So this might be the reason why I only had 20 psi of oil pressure all the time. And also no clamps here, so more luck than anything else, but okay. Hmm. Looks a bit rusty in there. Hello, need more boost? Don't judge me. I'm only going to use this on the parts I know that are not very tight, or at least should not be very tight. <laughs> I remember that my dad and I sealed this in with Zika Flex. Uh, so let's see if we can even get this off. I mean, we have to, so let's see how we get this off. No, let's see if we can very, very carefully. Uh, I'm not sure. Looks very clean actually. Mm. A little look inside under the intake manifold. Doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, push rods spinning, no build up or anything, just a bit of oil film left over. The dirt is just from me pulling off the intake manifold. Mmm, yucky. Mm. Uh -huh. Oh, that was very loose. Probably have to do something about that. Mm. Alrighty, let's drain the oil. See how it looks. Mmm, nice. <sighs> Smells nice. Very good. Oh, 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 oh. oh god, that's tight. Ah. Uh -oh. I didn't think about that. Oh, that was easy. Alright. Mmm. Okay. Nice. Strain the coolant. Oh boy. Uh, when I say coolant, I don't mean antifreeze. You might have seen that the head gaskets were leaking quite a bit. Might be due to the fact that I only drove it with water. Uh, to be honest, I can't really remember why I did that. I think something was leaking. But uh, anyway. I think there's still coolant in there, but if I look in here, I can see that it's quite plugged. Ooh. Mm. Okay, now it's not plugged anymore. Alright, let's get rid of the harmonic balancer. Uh, this might be a bit tricky to take off because when I installed this, it was already quite hard to pull it on there. Oh no, 
It moves pretty, f pretty good. It's fine. Nice. <coughs> Let's go. Ooh. Mm. Many people believe that things like rocker arms, push rods and stuff need to go into the same place where they were taken out of. Technically, from what I know and what basically everyone agrees on, the only thing that has to go, really has to go back from where it came from, are the lifters that uh, ride on top of the uh, camshaft. This is very fucking important. So uh, I won't concentrate on the rocker arms or the push rods. I will only concentrate on the lifters. I'm not really sure if I will reuse the camshaft. Uh, we'll first have to see in the side the engine if anything is uh, worn excessively or something. But let's just keep disassembling and uh, start with the rock arms. Let's pull the push rods. Just so there's a bit of build up on here. Not sure if this is from me, uh, but I don't think so because I did not drove that much with the car before I crashed it. Um, I think 7,337 kilometers. Would need to check the odometer because I reset that to, to zero. Before I started driving. Time to pull the heads. In my opinion there is a specific order in which you should loosen the bolts. Uh, in general it's just the reverse order of tightening them. Uh, when tightening them you tighten them up from the inside to the outside so that the material of the head can lay down uh, to the outside. If you would do it in reverse that would push itself in the middle and might warp or crack and uh, loosening them in the reverse order just feels right. But yeah, uh, let's try if my impact can do this. Oh yeah, totally, cool. Forgot one. All right. Let's see if this will move on its own or if I need a pry bar. I need a pry bar. There we go. Mmm, rusty. Rusty, crusty. Mm -hmm. All right, so this one have seemed to burn a little bit of oil, I guess. Uh, the other ones look fine. Uh, little spots of moisture down there. But Nothing very concerning at the moment. Have to check the cross hatch once the pistons are out. And the combustion chambers actually look pretty fine. Nothing unusual, except of course the quite rusty water jackets. But let's pull this off very carefully if we can. Okay, okay, there might have been a problem with the head gasket. This is a bit too dark for my taste. That was not a racist joke, by the way, just because I'm German, but okay. Uh, not sure if it had cooling problems with the uh, middle two cylinders, but this might had developed uh, into a head gasket failure in the future. Looks fine here. Mm. Also fine, I guess. Yeah. Let's continue. Mm. 
might have burned oil. Not so much, not so much, not so much. So you may have two either bad uh, valve stem seals or uh, tire piston rings. Oh yeah, this engine had a temperature problem for sure because we have the same uh, not sure if you can see that from there uh, same sort of coloring in the middle like we had on the other gasket but uh, a bit worse actually looks kind of burnt so we have to upgrade the cooling uh, and check the the water passages and also check out the rust flakes it came out of the water jackets so yeah cooling upgrade incoming now comes the most second most important part get the lifters out of their bores and put them somewhere where, where uh, there cannot be uh, switched up in case i want to reuse the camshaft because otherwise i need to buy a new camshaft but uh let's pull them out one by one where the fuck is my pick so I'm just very carefully trying to push behind the spring so I don't scratch up the surface. Yeah, that's nice. Bit of dirt uh, and grime, but by far not much. So looks still good. Have to be cleaned though, of course. Let's pull them all out. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah. Come on, bastard. So usually when those kinds of engine don't see a lot of uh, service in terms of oil change, there will be a lot of build up on the surfaces of the lifters and everything. But the problem with the build up on the lifters is that it makes it really hard to get them out of their balls. In this case, this engine is very clean, so let's fucking go. Nah, there we go. All right, because I do not have a uh, pan or something that's big enough, uh, I will remove the oil pan with the engine upright so it doesn't make a mess on my floor. Nice! Uh, oh boy. Uh, mm. I don't know if you can see that, but there is quite a bit of build up in here. And somewhere I had a piece of metal, like a small. Oh, oh. Uh, that's not small. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's a piece of a piston. Um, hmm. When did that fall off? Holy shit. Uh, I, when... <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Scheiße. Uh, when I got the engine, I pulled off the pan and I found another piece like this in the pan. Um, at this point, there were two of the same pieces missing from two separate pistons. And uh, I only found one of them, so there is a possibility that this was hidden right beneath the uh, splash tray and just worked its way back. So I just found it now, but I'm pretty sure that I looked very carefully. And also the color of the oil. Hmm. Hmm. I think we will have some surprises when we... Pull the bearings. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Mm -hmm.
That's not supposed to be that way. Hmm. I have no fucking idea how this engine ran so fucking well until the end. Like, uh, one piston ring, yet four broken pieces of skirt. So, <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, oh. Might have a spun bearing here. All right, let's inspect that later. Broken rings so far. Hmm. Oh. Not good. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was something driving here. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh, ring, piston, skirt. So in my opinion, uh, the engine is just tired in terms of ran quite a fucking lot. Uh, if you look down here, not sure how to position the lamp correctly. Um, those stripes you can see is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of uh, amount of water damage. Not sure if this is from the engine sitting for four years outside but under a roof. Um, or maybe could be because of slight amount of head gasket damage, I'm not sure. Uh, on the other side we have the same thing, but you can see it a bit better on this cylinder, right there. Can you see it? I don't know. Ah, it's a bit tricky to film. There, teeny tiniest amount of corrosion. You can feel it with your fingernail and this would check out with the oil consumption because if I remember correctly this was the cylinder uh, where the piston had a tiny amount of oil film on top so guessing the valve stem seals were fine it's just that the bore was just a bit corroded so it would pull oil from down below but in general yeah a tiny amount of scratches but not super bad. I can't even feel it. Uh, this one can feel a bit with the fingernail, but it's not deep at all. And there's basically no cross hatching at all left. So, engine ran very much, very long life, and it's just tired. I'm still not sure. I mean, yeah, broken piston rings, uh, of course, what the fuck ever. But, uh, Broken skirt right here, broken skirt right here, here and here. As far as I checked, those two pistons do not have broken rings, but I wonder if uh, the broken piston rings, except for this piston because it doesn't have a broken skirt, um, if maybe the clearance between the piston and the bore just got a tiny amount too big and started to tip over, so it broke piece of the skirt and maybe just maybe because of that piston ring got stuck and broke not sure if this theory is correct but engine in general very much savable and uh, we'll do that uh, I'll punch out uh, uh, what the fuck is it called in English I don't know if I can know at the moment punch them out and uh, put new ones in there later, uh, made out of, uh, not bronze, um, you know what I mean, the golden stuff. Um, and uh, clean the engine very good in a parts cleaner machine my dad has, for example. So, yeah, now we know that the engine might have to be bored, or basically has to be bored. Original engine, I bought for the car, because when I bought it, there was no engine in it. So I want to save this one. I'd rather not buy a good one because this might bring problems with it of itself. But yeah, nice. 
uh, we can uh, make a list for parts we need. Uh, still have to disassemble the heads, but I'll do that off camera or maybe I'll do a video, I'm not sure. But uh, first of all I need to get this video out. And uh, there are some things that I already decided on doing. Yeah guys, that was uh, the engine disassembly. Maybe especially because this engine is uh, from uh, uh, this car. But uh, yeah, see you guys soon. I do this way too much, but okay.